In its simplest form, sharpening is a reshaping process. The sharpening process is performed by reshaping those altered instrument contours to the original geometric designs as illustrated in the following diagram. The wear facet usually develops below the cutting edge on the lateral surface, which requires removal when sharpening in order to restore the cutting edge. Begin the sharpening process by lubricating the channels with sterile gauze soaked in water. Flat surfaces of stones can be used wet or dry. Hold the stone firmly on a hard surface such as a countertop. Unlike with flat sharpening stones, there is no need to lift up the stone and or even the curette or scaler to sharpen and risk injury to yourself. In addition, with the honing channel sharpening system, there is less chance of personal injury as the cutting edge is sharpened in the channel below the surface of the stone. For those few instruments that do not fit the narrow channel, use the wider channel. The wider channel was designed to accommodate all sickle scalers and wider universal curettes. Seat the working end of the instrument at the far end of the channel with the toe pointing away from you. The side of the curette blade must rest parallel to the channel walls. Slightly tip the instrument so that the entire length of the cutting edge is in contact with the channel wall similar to when one activates the cutting edge against the root of a tooth. This step is important to ensure that one is tipping the entire cutting edge of the curette against the channel wall at least to the angle of activation or greater as illustrated in the following diagram. The instrument can be tipped further and still make proper contact with the channel wall. Some degree of tipping is necessary before you draw the instrument and its entire cutting edge through the channel. Draw the instrument and its entire cutting edge in the direction of the instrument's heel, maintaining firm, steady contact pressure with the adjacent channel wall. Each of the two cutting edges found on each end of a universal curette and sickle scaler need to be sharpened separately. As now demonstrated, being sure to always tip the entire cutting edge against either curvilinear wall of the wider or narrower channels. Now check the instrument for sharpness using the acrylic test stick provided and holding the acrylic test stick vertically. When properly reshaped and resharpened, the cutting edge will bite into the acrylic with minimal pressure. If after the first seven to eight strokes through the channel, the cutting edge did not bite into the acrylic test stick with minimal pressure, then continue for an additional seven or eight strokes through the channel. The less abrasive BioEdge Whitestone will preserve metal and dental instrument life. However, if the cutting edge still does not bite into the test stick at the normal angle of activation, one can use the more abrasive BioEdge Chocolate Honing Channel Sharpening Stone, which was designed to accelerate the sharpening process and is especially effective in quickly sharpening improperly manufactured or damaged instruments. It also restores the smooth, rounded, curvy linear design of the lateral surface of the curette and sickle scaler. The more abrasive BioEdge Chocolate Honing Channel Sharpening Stone has an average abrasive particle size of 10 to 15 microns, similar to an Arkansas stone, and will quickly sharpen any curette or sickle scaler in one to three strokes, even worn and damaged instruments. For the Chocolate Honing Channel Sharpening Stone, follow the same directions as for the BioEdge White Honing Channel Sharpening Stone with the following additions. With the chocolate honing channel sharpening stone, it usually only takes two to three strokes in the channel, drawing the instrument and its entire cutting edge in the direction of the instrument's heel through the honing channel, 
maintaining firm, steady contact while hugging the channel wall. Following sharpening with the Chocolate Honing Channel Sharpening Stone, we recommend always finishing with the finer white Honing Channel Sharpening Stone to provide the smoothest and sharpest cutting edges. The channels of the white and chocolate honing channel sharpening stones are curvy linear and geometrically the same and are designed to follow, where possible, the written suggestions of the International Standards Committee on Dental Curette and Scalar Instrument Designs. If the cutting edge still does not bite into the acrylic test stick or cannot be used at the proper angle of activation, during the clinical use of the instrument, then the problem is now one of a significant degree of inadequate clearance on the lateral side of the cutting blade below the cutting edge as shown. Clearance is the space developed between the tooth and the side of the blade immediately behind the cutting edge when it is in function. The two surfaces involved form an angle measured in degrees known as the clearance angle. Although the instrument's cutting edge is sharp, it will not bite at the normal angle of activation of 80 degrees or 90 degrees unless one tips the cutting edge against the tooth to an angle of activation of 50 degrees to 70 degrees. This further tipping will enable the clinician to once again engage the cutting edge and overcome any interference from large metal projections developing on the lateral side of the cutting edge from normal instrument use with progressive wear. However, restoring proper clearance as found or needed with new instruments or properly resharpened instruments, as now illustrated, will permit the clinician to engage the cutting edge against the tooth at the standard angle of activation of 80 degrees without any interference from large metal projections and wear facets that develop on the lateral side of the cutting blade from normal scaling and root planing procedures. Therefore, one needs to routinely check the cutting edge against a test stick or during the clinical use against a tooth while scaling and root planing at 90 degrees, 80 degrees, 70 degrees, and 60 degrees to see if the cutting edge bites from heel to toe. This checking for adequacy of clearance should be done during the life of the instrument to accommodate the wide range of positional variations on the two surfaces during therapeutic mechanical instrumentation. Proper clearance is essential if the cutting edge is to make contact against the tooth with enough pressure and precision. With insufficient clearance, force used in pressing the blade against the tooth is dissipated over the entire area of contact instead of being concentrated at the cutting edge where it belongs. Thus, scalar and curette edges lacking adequate clearance must be pressed against the tooth with proportionately greater force and leads to hand, wrist, and finger fatigue. Clearance specifications vary continually during scaling and root planning according to alterations that accompany each change in position of instrument angulation or tooth contour. With normal use of a curette or scaler, instead of finding significant rounding at the cutting edge itself, it is usually a progressive loss of clearance through abrasion that dulls a scaling instrument in use. There is no need to resharpen the cutting edge itself. One needs only to restore proper clearance on the lateral side of the cutting blade. Minor deficiencies in clearance are corrected with the honing channels of either the BioEdge white or chocolate stones. Major deficiencies in clearance can now be easily corrected during clinical use by using the new white and chocolate cutting edge technology honing channel clearance sharpening stones. Now, please watch the section on the proper use of the cutting edge technology honing channel accessory clearance sharpening stones.